thinking of uh, Kwati is a good story. We have leprechauns and mermaids here. <laughs> Some people don't know that, <laughs> but we do. <laughs> and uh, just like the Irish people in, uh, over in the, those areas, you know. And uh, But we could share one of those, I think. That would be really nice. I'll share with you a Kwati story then. Um, if you're listening to the story, could you say habu? Could I hear you say habu? Habu. That's very good. That means we are listening, I'm listening. It means uh, you're, please tell the story, it says in it. And it means you haven't fallen asleep. <laughs> and uh, so it's real important, you know, and it keeps us together, keeps us working together. You know, it's not just me. I don't want to tell a story by myself. And that's why we opened with a welcome song because uh, we want the people who told these stories to be here. They're, they're going to help us tonight. They're going to help us tell this story. So long ago, Kwati was there. That's one of his names. He's a little leprechaun. He's an Indian leprechaun. I'll describe him to you. Uh, he's just like a leprechaun from over in the, you know, the Isles and everything, but he's an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's got real long hair. And his hair is even a trickster. It moves out in front of him and tangles his feet up. And so even his hair is a trickster. He's very trickster, this being. He's this forest spirit. And there, sometimes he's uh, got food around his mouth, you know, usually, because he constantly eats, you know, when a, a child gets chocolate around their mouth. That's like Quatty there. And he's got a real big belly. He's got to drag around behind him. <laughs> so that's Quatty. And there, he's got another name too. Can you say Quati? He's got another name. It sounds like a duck. Can you say it like a duck now? Quanti. Quanti. <laughs> That's his other name too. <laughs> and so anyway, he uh, he was there. Quati was there long ago by the river, and Quati had caught some nice salmon, you know, and he was cooking them up on sticks. The traditionally, it was pretty traditional that way, cooking them up, and there he laced them in the sticks in the fire. And there, he could not wait. He never, you know, Kwati, he never prayed for his food. He'd only make fun of it. And so he made fun of his food. And he would say, Oh, you nice big fat thing. I'm going to eat you up, you big fat thing, you. Abu. And there, he just couldn't wait for that salmon to get cooked, you know. So he just ate food from his hair. He pulled it out because he had scraps of food all over him and he just <laughs> <laughs> Oh he loved his food but he made a terrible sound. Abu. <laughs> and somebody heard the sound, it was the chief of the moth people and he said, Ooh, what is that terrible sound? What is that? Oh, it's quite why doesn't he get some manners? And so they decided Let's play a trick on Kwati because he's always playing tricks on us. So there the moth people have a special power. They have a sleep power. And they flew over to Kwati with their wings and <laughs> they put Kwati right to sleep. And Kwati <laughs> fell asleep. And the moth people flew over to the salmon and they gave a little prayer and they started eating up because it was just done. And they <laughs> ate the salmon and it was so good. And then the chief of the moth people, he had another idea. He said, wait a minute, hold on, I've got another idea. And so what they did was they gathered up the oil from the salmon, you know, and they got the bones and they flew over to Kwati and they pulled out his tongue. And they rubbed the salmon oil all over his tongue. And they rubbed it on his hands and they stuck some bones in his teeth. And then they waited behind the bushes and trees. Do you know why? Because the bushes and trees said, hide behind us. And so they did. They hid behind the bushes and trees and they waited for Kwati to wake up. And there Kwati woke up. And he looked at his salmon and he couldn't believe it. It was devastated, just scraps. And there he said, my salmon, my salmon. Salmon, he tasted salmon on his tongue and he had salmon all over his hands and he said, oh my God, 
I must have eaten my salmon and not even known it. I am so powerful, I didn't even know I ate my salmon. But he always thought that he was very, very powerful. Abu. And there from behind the bushes and trees, the moth people laughed. And they laughed, you know why? Because this time they got to play a trick on Kwati. And it's usually the other way around. <laughs> and, you know, there's, uh, we don't have morals in our story. Um, but we do say that these are our teachings. This is how we learned to keep a world in balance for tens of thousands of years. How to keep peace. How to keep our nature, the home of the animal and plant people, healthy and whole in our waters. Whole, my mom would scoop salt water right out of the jana, the, the ocean, the sea here, and cook her food. That's how we learn to keep it whole, our teachings. So we don't tell people what to learn from these stories, you know why? Because we are to be thinking people. Each and every one of us, if there is a teaching for us in this particular story, your spirit will know it and it will connect to those teachings. And it's not for me to tell you what to learn because it would be insulting in our way. But in a fun way, I was told there's a moral to this story. Never fall asleep on the job. And that is all. <laughs> Thank you.